In this video, we'll be learning about puberty and the menstrual cycle. So we'll cover what puberty is and how it's triggered by reproductive hormones, the four stages of the menstrual cycle and what happens at each stage, and finally, the four key hormones involved in the menstrual cycle and how they interact with each other. Let's start with puberty. Puberty is the period during which adolescents develop secondary sexual characteristics, which just refers to physical changes in the body, like growth spurts and the development of body hair. This process usually begins between the ages of 8 and 14 and is triggered by hormonal changes in the body. In males, this hormone is testosterone, which is the male sex hormone and is produced in the testes. In females, puberty is triggered by estrogen, which is the female sex hormone and is produced in the ovaries. In addition to the physical changes, these hormones also trigger sperm production in males and the menstrual cycle in females. Before we dive into the details of the menstrual cycle, let's take a quick look at where it all takes place, the female reproductive system. In the middle here is the uterus, surrounded by the uterus lining, which is important to remember because it's this structure that builds up and breaks down during the menstrual cycle. Then we have the ovaries out here on the sides, which are connected to the uterus by these fallopian tubes. Eggs are stored in the ovaries, and after ovulation, they travel through the fallopian tubes to the uterus, where they could either implant into the uterus lining, or break down and be expelled from the body. Let's move on now to the menstrual cycle and its four stages. The average length of a menstrual cycle is around 28 days, but this varies a lot between different people, and it's important to remember that that's perfectly healthy. Now, to illustrate what's happening during the menstrual cycle, we usually use these graphs, which you might have noticed are a bit weird. The red stuff represents the uterus lining with the y-axis showing the thickness of the uterus wall, and the x-axis being the time in days. Stage 1 is known as menstruation, and is the period of bleeding that normally lasts about 4 days, and is due to the breakdown of the uterus lining. We can see this in the first section of the graph, where the thickness of the lining is decreasing. Stage 2 is when the uterus lining starts to build up again, and becomes a thick spongy layer with lots of blood vessels in it. It lasts around 10 days, up to day 14, and its role is to prepare the uterus lining for a fertilized egg, because this is where any fertilized eggs will implant. Stage 3 is ovulation, which takes place in a single day and involves the egg being released from one of the ovaries. Finally, stage 4 stretches all the way to day 28, and involves maintaining the uterus lining. Once we get to the end of the cycle, if no fertilized egg has made it to the uterus, then the uterus lining starts breaking down, and we go back to stage 1, and the whole cycle repeats. However, if there was a fertilized egg, then it would implant into the uterus lining and slowly develop into a fetus. If this happens, the cycle doesn't go back to stage 1 again. The menstrual cycle actually stops because the woman is pregnant, so there would be no need for this cycle anymore. The last thing to look at is the hormones that control the menstrual cycle. Estrogen, which is produced in the ovaries, stimulates the uterus lining to grow. We see the level of estrogen increase in stage 2 as the uterus develops, and then fall once the lining has grown. Meanwhile, progesterone, which is also produced in the ovaries, increases in stage 4 and maintains the lining of the uterus. If progesterone levels drop, then the uterus lining breaks down, which restarts the cycle. The other two hormones, are luteinizing hormone, LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone, 
FSH, which are both produced in the pituitary gland, a small gland behind your eyes near your brain. The role of FSH is to stimulate one of the eggs to mature in one of the ovaries, while LH stimulates the release of that egg on day 14, which remember we call ovulation. So FSH stimulates the egg to develop and LH causes it to be released. Let's now see how all four of these hormones interact with each other during the menstrual cycle. At the very start of the cycle here, the high levels of FSH stimulate the ovaries to produce estrogen. As the estrogen levels start to increase here, estrogen inhibits the release of FSH, so FSH levels decrease, which is an example of negative feedback. The higher levels of estrogen also stimulate the release of LH, causing this LH spike. And it's these higher levels of LH that result in ovulation. Finally, towards the end of the cycle, the levels of progesterone increase, which inhibits the release of both LH and FSH. So the levels of both of these hormones drop until the cycle starts again. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.